in this workflow segment, we actually have a question. So we're going to talk about uh, matching the looks of the DJI Phantom or Mavic footage to other cameras when editing them. Because, you know why we're going to talk about it? Because that's what I because just did. That's what <laughs> kind you... Kind of. Oh, yeah, you just shot it, actually. Yes, you just mm -hmm. shot the Phantom and it had a GH4. So I'll be dealing with the same issue, actually. So I better listen to my own advice mm -hmm. and come up with something good. But uh, you know what? It's funny. Uh, one of our listeners, Pavlos... Uh, Pavlos Ioannidis. I'm sorry if I botched up your name. It's Greek. So I have an excuse. Oh, yeah. Let's... Pavlos. We'll oh, I'm just not, call I'm him not Pavlos. even going to try to so pronounce it. He, sent me, he emailed me a question, actually, through our uh, dronephotographypodcast.com website uh, about matching a footage from his GH5 to uh, the Phantom, the Phantom 4. I'm going to, just in case, he sent me an audio question, just in case I can't for some reason put it in a podcast, I'm going to read it. Uh, hi, Peter and Micah. I'm Pavlos from Greece. So he is from Greece. Uh, and I recently purchased the Phantom 4 Pro, and I tried to match the image profile to get the one that the GH5 has. How can I match the V-Log color profiles on the Phantom 4 Pro so it matches the one on GH5 in order to have a similar look when put on Premiere Pro? Hmm. Can I reduce sharpness, contrast, and saturation like you have advised us to do so on a Phantom 3 Pro? In a, wow, so he's a long time listener. In order to fake the flat profile, or will this introduce more noise? Okay. Good In order question. to fake the flat profile, you flatten it out. Yeah, yeah. So you are faking the flat profile, yeah. actually. Right. Right. So uh, a good question, Pavlos. Thank you for asking it. I think it's important because I uh, many of the, the drone photographers, uh, obviously, now you have two tools, right? So you may have a good SLR or a Micro Four Thirds in your case, which GH Five is an excellent camera. We still yeah. haven't upgraded. We have a couple of GH Fours which are great already, and I only hear good things about a GH Five. So. But with that said, no, you know, not many people may necessarily have the money to spring out on the X7 or even want to do it or the, the X5. So they'll just keep the Mavic or the Phantom on the, um, for the aerial part of it, those few shots they need to grab. Then the question is, how do you match them? Mm, mm. It's a good question. It is, it is a good question. There's a few so, ways you can go about it, but let's see. Uh, yeah. What so do you have to say? I would just say he, he wrote Vlog uh, color profile. So I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure he means D log. Or the V-Cine like, right? But it's a log color profile. Or he's smarter than we are and yeah. he knows something we don't. And he found, he found a different function. I don't know. It's been a while with the Phantom 4 Pro, actually, for me. So something may have changed. Yeah. They may have. But with that said, it's a log color profile. So what right. log does, I mean, first of all, let's talk about what the log is, right? So the log is, a, the D-log is the DJI's version of, a, of an algorithm that pretty much live, gives you a more lean way in a post. It leaves things flatter for you. It, it, in theory, it doesn't extend the dynamic range of a camera. That's more of a physical thing, but it, it does give you more detail in some, most situations in your shadows, in your darks, in your highlights. But where I discovered the D-Log has its limitation on, on the drones like the Phantom 4 Pro and the Mavic, especially the Mavic and like a Phantom 3. Uh, Phantom 4 Pro has a little larger sensor, but it's still challenged by this. The, the problem is that, uh, A, it's the sensor size, but not even that, it's the SD card. And you're trying to do a flatter profile while you still have the limitations of writing it on the SD card, so it does get compressed. And as I said, this is worse with the the Mavic and the, the Phantom 3. The Phantom 4, it's, it's a bit better, mm -hmm. but what ends up happening, the compression ends up turning things um, like a surfaces that are close in color to each other. It blends meaning, them together. Yeah, meaning you're looking at a canopy of trees or you're looking at the water or you're looking at the, the gravel, you know, road. It or, blends them together. Or New England in the wintertime. Or New England when, in, in, or in a fall time. Or New England brown. in any time. It's all trees. So. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you look at the trees, which is 99% of the time we mm -hmm. fly, it can do that. And it's it, instead of, yes, you'll still get a nice, you know, probably more detail in the highlights and shadows, but you're paying for it in that. And more contrasty, the environment that you're shooting in gets, the worse this appears to be. So that's why I've always mm -hmm. been apprehensive about the D-Log. You know what? I love the D-Log on the, the Inspire 2. It's incredible. On the SSD. Yeah. In the yeah. EI mode or without. Yeah. Because the SSD. The, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, well, the EI mode on the SD card is not like EI mode. 
D-Log and the H.264 codec on the SD card, micro SD don't like each other. It's not ready for prime time, but you do have the SSD there and you, you do have the ability to write at incredible speeds. So why not? And then you can actually take advantage of that. But right. back to the Mavic and Phantom. So the D-Log is one of the options and you can try to apply uh, something called a LUT. And I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the LUTs yet. So what... What are you familiar with? What the LUT I is, am. Micah? A LUT stands for lookup look table. Lookup table. You know, the first time I needed to look up a LUT, I found LUT explained in cats. <laughs> Check it out on Vimeo. Oh it's a God, funny video. I need to watch that. Uh, we'll explain it quickly, but do <laughs> do do Google or go on Vimeo and search for LUTs ex- LUT explained in cats. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's amazing. I can't it's, wait. It's very creative. It's very creative. It's, I, you know, I love cats. So I, yes, yes. That's the all we'll say about that. Every time I try to Google something, it always suggests the cat version of it. So it's just the the way the social media, the algorithms mm-hmm. learned me. Yeah. Cats are funny, so. <clears throat> they are funny. All right. So the LUT is a lookup table. And what it is, it's it's a file that, that has or contains instructions to turn one color into another. into another. So take one RGB value, each color has an R- RGB value assigned to it and turn it into another. And it does it pixel by pixel. So it's very accurate in, in, in changing the looks of the footage. So, um, Pavos, you may be able to find the LUTs because I'm pretty sure you're not the only one with the GH5 and the Phantom 4 Pro or or the Mavic. It's a pretty popular Micro Four Thirds camera, mm-hmm. and those are some pretty popular drones. So you should be able to find some LUTs that you may be able to use to actually apply to match or at least get close to the looks of the GH5. I mean, barring the lens, if you're using something with the long, you know, I mean, that's that's mm-hmm. the, what? The Phantom 4 is a 28 mil, so you could probably... I don't, you know what? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's 24, 28 mil full, you know, frame. So oh, I don't even know, 15 it's mil It's like maybe. a 94 degree equivalent for yeah. field of view. Yeah, so the 15 mil on the GH4 sounds about right. That, yeah. looks, that looks very similar to what you can get out of the Phantom 4 Pro. But uh, as far as the looks are concerned, I would recommend looking into some of the LUTs and maybe using them for Premiere. Mm-hmm. Uh, Polar Pro has, has some. Yeah, uh, I was going to recommend those. Yeah, I yeah. haven't really, you know, I know of them. I haven't tried them. Have you tried those? No, I haven't tried them. Oh, but you would mm-hmm. recommend them? <laughs> well, I was going to recommend looking into them. Oh, 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 nice save, mm-hmm. nice save. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. No, that's my, fine. My apology. But yes, I would look into those. I, they seem to have a pretty good reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, I, we may be wrong, so do try before you buy. There is a lot of LUTs. You can also do another thing altogether, and as you, as you kind of hinted on in your question, uh, Pavlos, is that he, or as Pavlos hinted on, on in the question, is we would skip the D-log altogether and then just create our own flatter profile mm-hmm. by the contrasting, the sharpening, and desaturating the the image. And then maybe, you know, if that's not enough, you can just use something like the Cinelike V that's mm-hmm. already a little, you know, lot of color profile that's attached to it. it it's, uh, I, I do like working with that for not all of the projects, but some projects. Again, I can tell you, hey, listen, turn down your sharpness to negative one and turn down your saturation negative yeah, two. A, and that's a it dynamic really, it, it really depends. It, it, yeah, it really depends what you're shooting. Every situation is different. But what you're doing, you know, obviously, if you're turning down your contrast, you're you're setting us, you're setting yourself up for being able to deal better with contrasty scenes in a post where mm-hmm. you don't. Again, New England, so you're shooting a um, house that's surrounded by a tree. And, you know, on a bright day and you don't have the polarized filter to take out the, the glare of the leaves, what you end up having is a very brightly lit up a canopy of the trees with like a black hole in the middle of it. Yeah. So decontrasting that can help you with some of it or at least bring it closer to what you need or at least help you, you know, find something in those shadows, in those darks in mm-hmm. a post and some detail in the in highlights, of course. Now, desaturation, that's, you know, a lot of people likes to do it. It's just easier to kind of match things in the mm-hmm. post. If you're doing it, if you're just cutting something in a DJI Go app and you are you can just not flatten your profile because it definitely has to be dealt with a post. And the sharpening that helps to address some of the compression issues, really, where you can that you can still see. Again, the smaller units are using the micro SD card, so um, you will see some compression elements and you may get, you know, uh, it's easier to deal with them in a post if you soften things up a little bit. 
if that makes sense. It does. All right. Uh, well, Good. I have a question, though. When was the last time that you shot D-Log on the Phantom 4 Pro? On a Phantom 4 Pro? Mm-hmm. When was the last time? <laughs> Never. Never? Probably. I No, I have, but I... Pfft, huh. Well... Half a year. It, it's, it's been a while for me. Yeah. The last time that I tried, um, it was before they did a firmware update. No, I'm at, yeah. Actually, I have a lot more stick time on an Inspire 2 now, so you know, apolog- I don't know if this is actually correct, but yeah. the, the mm-hmm. ISO on the Phantom 4 Pro and the X5S yeah. were locked at 500. Oh, yeah. And so well, between those two cameras, there's a mm-hmm. drastic difference in the noise in the image if you, at 500 ISO. Yeah. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm like, this is trash. <laughs> no good point. point. Really good point. <clears throat> and it is something that Pavlos mentioned too, mm-hmm. actually. It is the amount of noise that it introduces. And mm-hmm. the, you know, like the ISO in a D log, it's trying to bring the ISO to like what's native to the sensor. Right, right. And and these sensors are noisy, noisy, you know, a bit. You can deal with it in a pose, but you do lose some quality, you do lose some some definition, you know, it gets soft. If you're trying to remove noise in a pose, just like it does with the still photographs, mm-hmm. and you're right at 500, sometimes it's unbearable. It's it's a little bit too much. So yeah. you on a Phantom 4 Pro, I think it may be a little bit easier to bear. I mean that that seems to be. I still wouldn't go over 200, 400. No, yeah. In the EI mode, and again the EI mode on the Inspire 2, it's not really the ISO in its in its actual value. It's the EI, EI. You know, value, and yeah. it's it, it's. It Kinda seems like pretty f- tolerant on the X7, and it's fairly tolerant in the in the X5s. You can definitely see some noise, at, you know, around 400 ISO in the X5s, 800 on the X7. It's go that thing goes high. Uh, I but but a- you're right. It's you're paying, as you said, you're paying the price. So if Paolo asks, I'd rather um, personally what I would rather do. And you asked the right question. When was the last time you flew? <laughs> you mm-hmm. actually used the D log. I don't. I don't like it. I don't. I. I have. I have used it. I have clients mm-hmm. asked for it, and you know they dealt with it in a post. They were able to. They were okay with the noise. Some people are okay with the noise. It's. It's. It depends what look you're looking for, but um, I prefer just to soften things up and set them up as close to what I would expect in a post, and if you're matching them. Play with it until you get it as close as you yeah. can. Really, yeah. you know, because if you if you really really want them to match X five S or yeah, so they're both know. micro four thirds. Yeah, yeah, because then you could literally use the same glass and and if you put it on the Inspire two, you have the faster ride speed. But then again, we can mm-hmm. tell Pavel's hey. The answer to your question will cost you about eight thousand dollars. <laughs> so you're, you're fine. It's your your yeah. machine is fine there. It does take a little bit of work, but it can be done. Hopefully, this helps you uh, a little bit. And either you know whatever we just said about a D log or softening it up in a cine like modes. And I um, hope it works out. Let us know. Yeah. Good luck, man. All right. That is it for the workflow, and we will be right back after this. <laughs> 